they kept coming they kept coming now they've got to go they've got to keep moving day or night and where they come from there they have got to go from nothing to nothing to nothing and why hmm? they kept coming they kept coming now they have got to go they have got to keep moving day and night and where they came from there they have got to go from nothing to nothing to nothing there is nothing called the world what you call as the world what you call as objects that constitute the world are actually nothing because they are all in a flux if there is something it must be unchanging at least for the briefest possible period of time for something to be it must be there at least for the tiniest fraction of a second it must have some stability only then you can say there is something but in the world there is nothing because whatever there is is not stable even for the millionth part of a second the world is just a flux a movement a constant movement in which there is nothing but just the movement if you are not careful enough you might say that there is a wall here but is there a wall here what you call as the wall right now is not the wall the next moment something has changed So where is the wall? What is it that you are calling as the wall? Just an illusion. Give me something that doesn't change, and then we may probably agree that there is something <coughs> called the world. But there is nothing that doesn't change. So there actually exist no objects. There don't exist any objects. Hmm? there only exists a continuous flow a flow of time which is also referred to as the mind hmm? they kept coming they kept coming now they have got to go this is what our world is like coming and going and where they come from there they have got to go where do they arise from they arise from the same place where they go to where do they arise from what is it that you call as they objects where do they arise from they arise from nowhere truth may have a base can an illusion have a base base of the illusion is the illusion itself when the coming itself when the object itself is an illusion the disappearance too is bound to be illusory understand it this way what you call as yourself this too is a flux because what you are right now is not the same as what you would be the next moment when you are not there the question of where have you gone to become redundant if there is something only then it can go somewhere right the question that there was me where have i gone to after death holds weight only when there is something before death right the one who realizes that there never was anything 
also gets the answer to what happens after death. There never was anything. So what do you mean by what happens after death? Was there life at all? You ask about death because you believe in life. When you see that what you call as life is itself a big lie, then you stop wondering about death. When you see that the coming itself was an illusion, then the going is answered. Do you see this? And where they came from, there they have got to go. Where they came from, there they have got to go. Where does the dream go to once you wake up? It goes to the same place it came from. Nowhere. Just appeared, had no base, just looked as if it exists, didn't really exist. Hmm? From nothing to nothing to nothing and why? 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 The one who has seen that what we call as the drama of the so-called life is nothing, who ultimately in her compassion is bound to ask why? Because what we call as life is nothing yet gives so much suffering. So, so much suffering for the sake of nothing. He is bound to ask why. He is bound to ask why. Why? So much suffering for the sake of nothing. The one who is assumed to be suffering he himself does not exist. But the suffering exists for the sufferer. And obviously, Lalla is addressing the sufferer and asking him why. From nothing to nothing to nothing and why? <coughs> Yesterday you were talking about science and spirituality and you said that science deals with objects whereas spirituality deals with now so let's examine that when the objects themselves are so transitory that nothing can be called an object how can the subject exist? Hmm? Object and subject are two ends of duality. When objects don't exist, can the subject exist? But you find it far easier to say objects don't exist, but I do. Who am I? The one who looks at all the objects. Nice way to remain deluded. When objects don't exist, even the subject doesn't exist. The subject is every bit 
as much a mirage, a phantom, as are the objects. So it's not about me looking at the subject. Subject and object have to be looked at together. And you will see that the whole circuit of duality is a fake one. Not only one end of it, both ends of it. Neither does the world mean anything, nor do I. These are the two ends of duality. The world is the object, I am the subject. Neither does the world mean anything. And in absence of a meaningful world, how can I mean anything? In your definition of yourself, is there anything unrelated to the world? Remove the world. Now where do you stand? Remove the world. Where do you stand? You will fall. But it is such a sweet thing, no? To say, the world doesn't exist, but I do. Who am I? The witness of the world. You destroy the world. And in that process, prove your superiority. World doesn't exist, but I, the Lord of the world, I exist. Who is this I? Not the same that was 30 minutes back. A flow in time. It's constantly changing. Where would it go to? Nobody knows. Where it came from? Nobody knows. Hmm? This disappearance of both subject and the object. is called the vast nothingness which is the nature. Hmm? Which is the real nature. Everything else that you see around yourself is just a transitory projection. Only that vast nothingness is real. And don't be frightened by the negative word nothingness. In the nothingness of illusion, when the illusion reduces to nothing, then truth shines. When the illusion reduces to nothing, then the truth shines. So don't think that by nothingness there is only the process of refusal or negation implied. No. That which you think of as real is nothing. All it says is this. That which you think of as real is nothing. And when that is known, <coughs> then that alone remains which you can't think of and is yet real. What is nothing? That which you think of as real. Hmm? 
what all has come and gone what all has come and gone billions of population they kept coming they kept going from nothing to nothing to nothing <coughs> Is there anything that remains? Nothing remains. This nothing is the highest positive reality. It is not just an abnegation. You have so many times read this phrase, seeker of truth. Seeker of truth, right? Mm. What was Allah seeking? The truth. What do you mean by seeking the truth? When you say that I am seeking the truth, you mean I am seeking that which does not come and does not go. The sensitive mind is fed up of coming and going. The crude mind does not even see the coming and going. The crude mind does not even register that so much of coming and going is happening. But the sensitive mind gets fed up of it. It says, no, now I want that which doesn't come and doesn't go. That is meant by seeking the truth. The truth is that which doesn't come and doesn't go. So this nothingness is the absolute truth. Means there is no coming and no going. Hmm? This question from nothing to nothing and why? This is the question of the sensitive, compassionate mind. Why? What is this routine drama this happens and then that happens and then that happens and then that happens fed up of it what is seeking the truth that which never comes and never goes which is just there and in that being just there lies the greatest security for the mind you can never be deceived now. It can never be stolen or taken away from you because it never it comes, comes and goes. So it can never be taken away. It's like relaxing in the secure arms of the mother. Nothing can happen. I can't be taken away. That is meant by seeking the truth. Hmm? Not something transitory, not something which always comes with the fear and suspicion of its disappearance. Is there anything in your life about which you are so sure that it won't disappear? Anything? Hmm? No, that is hell, that is torture. And the seeker of the truth is the mind that doesn't want this torture anymore. It says enough of suspicion, enough of fear, enough of wondering what would happen, what's next, what if. I don't want to go into these questions anymore. Want something where I don't even have to think because thinking tires. Thinking is a distortion of the mind. Hmm? I don't want to think. I want to feel so certain, so safe, so secure. I don't want to think. When you are very, very sure of something, do you still want to think about it? No need. Relax. That is seeking the truth. That which doesn't come and doesn't okay. go. 
is there that is the truth hmm? that's the finality that the wise one searches for the stupid mind won't do that stupid mind is content with its regular upheavals with the frequent fires in the house it is all right fighting in the morning friendship in the evening love making in the night and it says it's life after all this is life sweet and sour the wise one says no this is not life this is hell i'm not prepared to continue with this What is the difference between a stupid mind, a dull mind, and a wise mind? The stupid mind is very used to its being. The stupid mind is very well adjusted to life. It sees no paradoxes. It sees no contradictions. it's a very nicely patterned grooved mind its patterns fit nicely with the patterns of the world so we said it's a very well adjusted mind the wise man is a kind of a misfit so as you are sitting here there is a deep wonderment in a few eyes this wonderment is the sense of misfit this wonderment is about seeing something new whereas there are others who are all right with things as they are oh i'm we are all right i'm all right because they got properly adjusted the stupid man does not see any paradoxes any contradictions it is not sensitive to even its own torture it is being tortured day and night but it has no love towards itself <coughs> no sensitivity so it behaves as if there is nothing wrong it behaves as if everything is proper and all right it is so blind that it doesn't see its own wounds and the blood oozing from them it says no what is the need to change what is the need to realize what is the need to seek the truth after all everything is fine and okay and sometimes the crudeness goes to the extent that if you try to display that no things are not fine things are not okay it wants to run away it wants to hide
it requires a deep faith to admit that things are not all right that there is suffering because if you admit that you have to do something about it and that generates fear in the mind if i do something all hell may just break loose to not to do something about it you feign you pretend that there is no disease at all if i am very very scared of surgery then i will hide my disease right because if i accept that i have a disease then i'll have to go under the knife <clears throat> hmm i have no faith in the surgeon so what do i do i pretend that there is no disease that's our story we have no faith that there is somebody who can rid us of our ailments so we just keep pretending oh we are all right you know our life is well adjusted no it's all cool what's wrong nothing is wrong i'm a regular fellow there is a doctor and he knows more about you than you yourself ever can have faith you are safe and secure with him hiding your diseases and pretending won't do when the world dominates your mind your heart weeps when the world fills up your being then you just want to vomit that's our situation the world has filled us so much that we are all nauseatic we want to vomit we are diseased the world is the sickness the world has entered every bit of our being it has violated us there is no virginity left no cleanliness nothing untouched here just coming and going coming and going coming and going and the resultant fear in the resultant instability coming and going hmm like the head spinning all the time all the time all the time have you felt it the head spinning so much is happening the head is spinning it is off center that is why people like lalla ask why and remember out of this why desolation or frustration or loneliness don't arise that's what your fear is right did i have admit if i ask if i reveal then i lose something no you don't lose anything ella didn't lose anything she got the dance the dance of shiva
So when you cry out aloud, why? That is the beginning of your dance. A sick man cannot dance, can he? He can stumble around. He can keep falling. And he can pretend that he is dancing. That's how all our dances are, right? Stumbling, falling, hitting, bleeding. And we say we are dancing. Only Lalla can dance. Because she was so free of the world. That even clothes were a misfit upon her. Only the healthy mind can dance, really dance. The others can just hit around in their random stupor. Thank you.